and we're very glad today to be here with Andrew Thompson from the um, Keller Williams One Group. And Andrew and I are going to chat a little bit about Mauritius as an investment opportunity, but also if you're choosing to move and live to in Mauritius on a permanent basis, what are the opportunities there? Um, good afternoon, Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Louise. What a great pleasure. And I uh, always had a good relationship with the state living and always love chatting to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, so we're going to keep it quite like start off quite basically. Uh, um, if you are looking, and I think a lot of folks are looking at the news nowadays and have concerns about, um, you know, not just about where their lives are, but where the lives and future of their children is going to be, what's happening in our educational institutes, what's happening in our, you know, SOEs, etc. And, um, and folks are getting a little bit nervous. And Mauritius, you know, sounds fantastic. It really does. And when you see the videos of happy people living in Mauritius, you feel very tempted. But what are the real processes of packing up your home, moving your business, or looking for work in Mauritius, and moving to Mauritius on a permanent basis? Maybe you could give us a little bit of background from your experience. You know, Louise, I think the first part in the process is you, you, you want to gain an asset and people generally look at uh, residential opportunities as the first uh, step in the process. So I would really look at opportunities either in the international resort schemes or alternatively now today in the smart city schemes on the island. And there are a number of these opportunities occurring, you know, north, south, east, west, etc. So that would be my, my starting point and the ability to, uh, to secure something which is in your price range and to ensure that you're looking at it in twofold. One, to invest and to occupy and secondly, to invest to see a return. Now, in the international resort schemes where it has a starting point at 500,000 US dollars upwards, that obviously comes with permanent residency. And, you know, I think my biggest advice is you hear people talking about the permanent residency side and the benefits and how you can start a company on the island, how you can create a trust and how you can start banking on the island. The first step, sign the sale agreement, get into the property side of things. I would take legal and financial advice from experts, not only here in South Africa, but also experts on the island, because you want to structure your affairs according to your your best tax requirements or best tax benefits uh, relating to your investment. So for me, that's that's the real sort of starting point. And I think the Economic Development Board, if you do pop onto their website, they look at everything from permanent residency, how to kickstart in terms of your documentation, but you do want to deal with well-recognized people on the island and well-recognized from a legal fraternity from a financial fraternity and to get the best possible advice. So Andrew, so if I'm purchasing a unit within a smart city development that sits at around, I think you can buy in at around two million rand or two, two and a half million rand. I think there might even be some single bedroomed ones that are coming in at slow, slightly lower. Are you saying if I buy in at two million rand with a South African passport, um, can I go and live permanently in that unit? You, you can. Um, the prerequisites to that are this, okay. Um, the smart city concept was really designed to, to attract a foreign buyer in on a much lesser value because the 500,000 US dollars into an international resort scheme, I think is out of reach of most people. So what we found is uh, the government of Mauritius, the Economic Development Board, put out a legal process where you can buy into a smart city starting at 6 million rupees upwards. And you just mentioned it already, approximately 2 million rand. But the real build starts possibly at around about 2.6 million rand upwards in terms of opportunistic buys. So if you look at that uh, from a perspective of living there permanently, uh, as a foreigner, going into Mauritius, you'd want to be a retiree over 50 years old, uh, unemployed, you're not allowed to work on the island, and you can gain a retirement visa to occupy that kind of unit and live there permanently for a three-year period, 
You have to put it into your own bank account, 18,000 US dollars per annum. Uh, and the government of Mauritius checks on that in terms of those values that are transferred into your account to ensure you're able to live. And following the three-year retirement visa, you apply for permanent residency uh, where you can permanently stay on the island thereafter. So that would be the process. Uh, as a foreigner buying into a smart city, you can own. You don't have to live there permanently. But I think it's a big attraction for South Africans where they could actually rent that unit out. Rent to locals, rent to foreigners, put it into a scheme where you get a rental pool return. Those kind of opportunities exist. And the yields expected through a unit like that, you can start looking at around about six to 9% in terms of annual yields. And I think for any South African at the present moment, buying an asset of that sort of nature and getting a yield of that sort of value that, would, that to me would be a big attraction. So if you decide to purchase the unit uh, and you're not, okay, you're not, I'm, I'm not over the age of 50 yet, very close, yeah. but not yet. Um, so I wouldn't be able to go buy my unit and pack up my family and move us all to Mauritius uh, yet. Um, uh, <laughs> yet. Um, I don't have the necessarily have the 500,000 US dollars. Um, but I am very interested um, in getting my family across to to Mauritius. Um, what would my next option be? What would the next option be for me? Okay, so just to add to what I've said already, uh, you could work on the island in terms of being employed on the island. And again, there's certain prerequisites in that regard. Okay, you could also uh, self-employ on the island. And there's minimum standards in terms of values that you need to achieve. And those targets, those budgets need to be presented to government in order for you to run and operate your own business on the island. You can be a director of a company and uh, as a director with, again, certain echelon of income into that company, you could live and work on the island in that regard. So effectively self-employ, uh, be an employee on the island, be a director on the island, and then the retirement option, which I mentioned as, as the, the main category of people that I think will be buying into these smart city concepts. Okay, so, so and just from a, just on that note, if, my, if I do move my business across to Mauritius and I have set myself up and I meet those criteria, um, can my family come with me and can my children attend the, the schools, I think there's international school and the universities, the Middlesex University, um, would they be able to, to have access to those facilities as well? Uh, Louise, I do believe so. And again, I just refer back to the Economic Development Board's website. You know, they frequently ask questions there. Mm. And generally families with children under the age of 25 years old Providing they meet those criteria of occupation permit, uh, the permit to be self-employed on the island, be a director of the co a company, or a retirement visa with, uh, leading into permanent residency, you should be able to take your family across to the island of Mauritius, yes. So, so the other side then is to invest. So um, I have, uh, I'm living in South Africa and I'm now sitting in two choices. Do I sell my property that I currently own and invest my money into a Mauritian property and then choose a different type of scheme for here in South Africa. Or I've got some funds available and I can now invest into, uh, into Mauritius. So, so the first step now is, can you get funding? Can I, can I uh, bond a property in Mauritius? Louise, um, I speak under correction, um, but loan to value on the island uh, in the developments we've been working on and participating in, in terms of acting as a sales agent, uh, loan to value is up to 50%. So you can secure a pro property with 50%, uh, call it cash value, and you can go to the banks locally through a Fraser Bank, Investec, whatever it might be, and apply for a loan to value of 50% of the capital value of the unit. And then um, you mentioned earlier that it can then join a, uh, a rental pool or you can rent it out. It's quite difficult renting out a property when you're quite far away. And uh, would you, would Keller Williams one offer a rental uh, pool? Is this something that your business looks at? 
Uh, Killer Williams one on the island. We're just starting out on the island, but I do know there are professional management companies on the island that offer that kind of service. In terms of maintenance, in terms of housekeeping, in terms of assisting with the management of your individual product. And I think uh, it would be vital to appoint a management company to oversee that. I think in terms of uh, costs of those kind of companies, uh, I've heard of figures of up to 20% of the rentable value of the unit would go to the management of that kind of facility. And then how would you budget a, well, how would you budget that return? So, and I, what I mean is, if I think of Mauritius traditionally, I think of it as being a holiday destination. So are you going to say that my, my rental unit is only going to be full 40% of the year or um, have you found that locals are renting those units as well? And actually it's not a short term rental game, but rather finding a permanent employee, a permanent rental. So let's talk quickly the international resort schemes. And I mean, I've, uh, I've been watching uh, the likes of Villa Valriche, uh, La Belize, et cetera. Your very high-end properties, you're probably, if you were to rent those properties out, and those kind of buyers generally don't, but if you were to rent those properties out, you'd probably end up with a yield of around about 1%. So it cannot be a very high promise in terms of rental yields on the high-end stock. Uh, the lower-end stock, around about the 2.5 million rand, 2.6 million rand, I would estimate up to 3.5, 4 million rand type of opportunities uh, a range of retur returns or yield in that regard. And I would estimate anything between around about 4% and 9% at your peak in year one. And obviously the big demand comes on the entry level stock. And the reason why I say that is local Mauritians are, are renting. If you think back 30, 40, 50 years ago, unemployment on the island was around about 50%. A lot of people were unemployed. It was a very, very poor community. And I think what's happened in Mauritius is there's just been this education of people, growing of people, investing in the people of Mauritius. And again, unemployment on the island, I think, sits at the moment at around about 8%, which is dramatically low. But what uh, the youngster that's coming into business there, working in the financial ad advisory institutions, etc is now earning an income and is either investing in property or alternatively rent. Um, have, we found, have you seen a number of South African businesses move across to Mauritius in your time, in, in your time there? Is that been- uh... Absolutely. You know, Louise, uh, probably over the last two, three years, I think I've done three road shows to the island. And just through that experience, you know, we've redirected uh, investors out of South Africa of around about 50 to 60 families that have shown interest in terms of investing in the island. I can remember at least two occasions where families have decided to move across and to take their whole business across from South Africa to Mauritius and mainly because of the tax efficiency and the incentives that are offered on the island. Um, so if you are, so you're looking from a pure investment, so which sectors? So, you know, within the, obviously there's the smart city schemes, I understand those, but there are various and what makes them quite exciting is that there's various entry points and various different schemes within the smart city scheme. Um, what, what have you found has been from an investment point of view, the sweet spot, if you can call it that? Yeah, that's, a, that's quite a difficult one because, you know, the bulk of the inquiries that we've had are predominantly around residential. So that's, that's the main aspect. Um, when, when you look at people that are interested in participating in the economy of Mauritius, uh, mainly financial advisors, you know, people that are in the financial game, and then people that are commodity driven, where they've got a light industrial type of requirement, and they want to create commodities that they can export from the island of Mauritius and possibly exporting to the likes of the East or exporting to Africa. And with Mauritius being so centrally uh, located in terms of uh, doing business, uh, those, those are the kind of situations that uh, where people have shown genuine interest in, in that regard. And um, so, okay, so now, 
would you say that if you're wanting to immigrate permanently to Mauritius that buying into a smart city scheme would work or would should you be looking more down sort of towards um, the coast and uh, you know looking at kind of a different type of structure because you know the buying and living into an environment on a permanent basis requires multiple uh, types of uh, you know stimulants so the what is the locate access to the airport what is the transport routes how accessible are shops and companies etc so whereas from my understanding the smart city schemes are quite up north um, uh, which and that seems to be a development node a growth node at the moment um, would you say that that you should it's a growth node now or already or would it be something that you should look at a little bit more long term as as this as these developments are only beginning to roll out now yeah louise i i think it's sort of two categories that we're looking at one is the sort of uh, wealthy wealthy individual that has the ability to to buy a home in an international resort scheme and you know 500,000 us dollars for an individual like that uh the top 10 percent of the wealthy in south africa that would be the attraction for those mm. kind of people and they they're cash wealthy they don't have issue around funds and funding of a home of that sort of nature and they're quite willing to invest in a property where they're going to see capital returns of maybe uh, doubling their money in terms of that investment in particular i think for the person uh, that we sort of targeting in south africa our target would be retirees as i've mentioned already and then the young up and coming families that are looking at being employed in the island in a specific kind of industry, okay, that want to employ, be employed, have an alternate uh, style or uh, type of lifestyle on the island, and are looking at uh, the bigger picture of Mauritius in terms of offering a stable environment, offering safety, security. Uh, but a big draw card to the island is the tax efficiency of the island itself. So I hope that answers your question because, you know, it, it, I think it's almost two separate categories. Um, yeah, it uh, definitely is. And I think that is why the question that it's important to start unpacking it a little bit because, you know, it's like residential community markets. As the market opens up to new, le new buying, like new levels of buying power, so you open it up and now you've got an affordable sector coming in, you know, one has to start looking at, uh, why how will this how will the island be run efficiently um, you know you've now shifting from a holiday maker type uh, client to a permanent residence and as we both know living and working in residential communities that comes with a whole lot of new issues and it will be interesting to see how Mauritius transitions across to to cater for permanent residents, um, more permanent residents um, with coming from well, the Well, I, I, th I think they've transitioned tremendously. I mean, I, I've been traveling to the island for the last 30 years, and I speak about it often, you know. Uh, what attracts me to a particular space if I want to invest in that area? And the first thing I look at is the government decisions as to where they're spending their money, okay? Uh, infrastructure spend in terms of improvements in terms of road, rail, air, and you've seen a new airport uh, emerge in Mauritius. You've seen all the road infrastructure, the highways, the connectivity, uh, the bypassing of Port Louis, decongesting that sort of area. So from an infrastructure point of view, electricity, water, the sustainability of the island from that aspect. They are looking at green solutions in terms of solar. They're looking at uh, uh, diesel land plant opportunities, et cetera, et cetera, and a very forward thinking government. And what I love about the, the government is how they buy into specific decisions around infrastructure, about facilities, improvement, et cetera. You've seen hospitals uh, grow, go from a third world, world type of environment to a first world type of environment with hospitalization, doctors, dentists, optometrists of an absolute high quality being attracted through to Mauritius and now offering those kind of services. Schooling previously was very French orientated and now moved uh, very into a very sort of English based language, uh, English, French schooling, universities, 
And I did mention earlier, Middlesex University establishing on the island. What you found from a South African point of view, there's almost a congregation of South Africans starting to move along the west coast region of the island, predominantly around the Black River, Le Mans type of area, extending up into the Flick and Flack area where Uni City has been developed as a smart city. Uh, but always the attraction from an a, a, a entertainment aspect is around the Grand Bay sort of area. And uh, we over the last little while have uh, promoted key resorts in that sort of space. Uh, you know, Pam Golding is very prominent there with Jonathan Tagg and the guys doing uh, development or promoting development in that particular space. Uh, but there's a certain liking to the west coast of, of Mauritius and we're seeing the South Africans sort of emerging in that space. That's now extended into, into retail and into facilities uh, with South African stores having opened up there. Uh, Bagatelle as a shopping center is a prime example of that. So it's not only uh, the commercial, the retail, uh, the, the hospitals, the hospitality uh, moving into residential, uh, but I think there's a massive attraction that's taking place on the island and specifically around facilities improvement, infrastructure, and uh, the, the, the government spend taking place on the island. I think uh, to just to, you know, you were mentioning this and I think maybe just to cut, recap for the folks that are, are looking to retire, um, the, what type of retirement facilities are available at the moment? Are there estate, do they, are they developing estates with um, step down, high care, you know, frail care centers? Or um, do you stay in your unit and then there, there's ample medical support should you need additional support? Um, Andrew, so if you do look at Mauritius as a retirement option, uh, what, are, what medical uh, infrastructure is available to you? If, if, you, if you look at uh, retirement villages on the island, I think there's big demand for a retirement developer to come along and do something of that sort of nature. But I don't really see specific retirement villages on the island established as of yet. What you found is the smart city concept might suit the retiree in a two or three story building with lifts in a small two bedroom apartment. That to me would be the attraction for a retirement type of person. But the facility and the service offered in that complex is not necessarily, necessarily retirement oriented. But you mentioned that the hospitals are, are they've got a number of hospitals that are, uh, you know, that are good, good standing. Um, is that the case? Would, the, would you then be able to access a medical support from the, the local Mauritian hospitals? Absolutely. Uh, there are government hospitals. There are also private hospitals that are available on the island. I think uh, we must caution people because medical aid will be more expensive than normal in mm. comparison to South Africa. And I think people would need to do their research in that regard to ensure that they're on the right package for the right sort of value uh, in the in the right sort of offering of services from a hospital sorry from a hospital perspective, I, I think you know if if I think what is important from a Keller Williams one point of view is we've we've established ourselves here in Amschlange and obviously in, along the north coast region, uh, predominantly in KwaZulu Natal, and we're quite happy to take inquiries in terms of Mauritius. And redirected through, we've got started a business center there through uh, Keller Williams One. Uh, it's it's owned by Magnus Haystick and represented by Gavin Bushart and his wife Yolandi on the island. And they're just starting out now in terms of promoting properties uh, on the island itself. So the trick for us is to go out and, and mandate all the developments on the island. And I'm pretty convinced within the next couple of weeks, in the next couple of months, we're going to be in a great position in terms of being a one-stop shop for any client to come to us in terms of inquiries on commercial, retail, residential, but where we can assist you as the client with putting together your structure of company, putting together your structure of trust, and ensuring that you can open a bank account on the island and operate as such. And we hope to be able to give the best possible advice in terms of uh, doing the push, of, push out of South Africa into a quality one-stop shop on the island through Gavin and his team. 
Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today at Estate Living. And we'll uh, continue to unpack Mauritius and the opportunities that lie there within. And um, please send us some questions and we can look at those questions as well in these conversations. Um, yes, thank you so much, Andrew. We appreciate it. Louise, thanks very much to you and Jamie Lee. I've thoroughly enjoyed chatting to you and to Estate Living and uh, very much appreciate the opportunity. And uh, hopefully we'll come back with more news around developments that we can promote and that you can maybe select on the island in terms of mo moving across to the lovely Mar Mauritian island. Thanks very much indeed.